Hey YouTube, Rico knows here. So if you didn't see it, according to the Transfer Portal for Playing Time Twitter page, uh, the NCAA has granted an extra year of eligibility to any Division I athlete that's been ineligible since 2019 or 2020. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible for college football or for all college athletics. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why it's terrible. It's terrible for Title IX. It's terrible for head coaches, but it's great news for any player that was deemed ineligible for any other reason, right? So how are you deemed ineligible? Well, well there, once upon a time, the NCAA had teeth. Once upon a time, the NCAA had the authority to implement rules or at least punishment and say you were ineligible. So if you transferred more than once and you didn't get a hardship waiver granted, they deemed you ineligible for the entire season and you couldn't play. What this is essentially saying is, hey, if at any point we told you your story was bullshit, my bad, we don't have the jurisdiction to do that anymore. We don't have the authority to say that anymore. That's what this is saying. Okay, they already took away the NCAA's ability to impose any type of punishment if you violate their rules. Judges have done this. They've, they've labeled it antitrust laws. If you guys don't know what that means, please go do some research on it. I don't want to explain it in every damn video. But what this really means is you're going to get a, your year of eligibility back if you were just sitting around at the house for one year. Very few players, and I say very few, maybe one or two at every university max is getting this ineligible status every year. Like, maybe one or two on every single team. Like guys, I study rosters. Every now and then a guy will just disappear and they'll be like, well, he wasn't deemed eligible for the year. He transferred. He said he transferred to take care of his grandmother and grandma, uh, you know, was elderly anyways and she's dying. It had nothing to do with him, that kind of stuff. But since the judge in Tennessee and in some other state, since they all came out and said, listen, NCAA, you can't do that. You can't hinder these athletes from transferring and being ineligible because every other student can transfer without punishment. Yet these guys want to transfer. And now you're holding them back. So let's just let everybody play. And that sounds great. Here's what they're not doing, though. They're not fixing the problem. This is going to negatively impact every high school student, every junior college football player, and anybody who gets recruited by a college team. Because every NCAA team is still 85 scholarship limit. So you can give all these players an extra year of eligibility and tell them they can stay in college, but it's still 85 scholarships. We can't increase the number. You keep giving out years of eligibility. Virginia gave out an extra year for the mass shooting. Everybody gets an extra year at Virginia. Everybody gets an extra year because of COVID. You're giving entire recruiting classes an extra year of eligibility, and you're not giving any school an, a raise in the limit of scholarships. So we only got 85 seats, 85 seats on the bus, and we try to sign 25 every year to get on this bus. Oh, we can redshirt and keep some around. But everybody gets to stay on this bus for four years. If you redshirt, that's five years. You had COVID, that's six years. You get this extra year of eligibility, that's seven years. If you were at Virginia and you survived the mass shooting, that's eight years. I don't care that they're 25 years old. Everybody always makes this joke. Oh, we're going to have 25, 26-year-old college students. No, what I care about is how in the hell... Are these college coaches supposed to fit recruiting classes in 85 seats? There's not enough, there's not enough academic attrition. There's not enough injuries and retirements. There's not enough graduations to make up for this. Usually, if you sign 25, and I keep saying 25 because that used to be the limit. Now there is no limit. Okay, now there is no limit. The Houston nut rule is thrown out the window. If you didn't know, that rule was implemented back in like 2014 because of Houston nut, and now it's gone. Initial entry scholarships can go beyond 25. Initial entry scholarships, that's coming out of high school and JUCO, now they just say you can get as many as you want, fit it on your team as many as you want. But what I'm telling you is, if you took 25, and you took 25, and you, took, and you redshirted no one, in four years, you would have 100 players. If you redshirted no one, 
A hundred players. That's too many. Meaning you can't sign 25 every year. But these teams are signing more than 25. And if they lose 20 players in the portal, they're signing 20 players back. That's a one-for-one swap. You just said, hey, you guys can stick around another year. I, I don't know how to explain this. I, I'm trying to give you guys an analogy. I, any, any of you guys ever been to a nightclub? You ever been to a nightclub and it starts getting full and it starts getting packed? What if there's a line outside trying to get in the club? And they say, we're going to let in 25 every hour. And if you've been in this club over four hours, you need to leave. It's been five hours. We keep putting in more people. It's been six hours. We keep putting in more people. And then we say, wait, if you were in here for four hours, no, you get to stick around for five hours. Oh, no, wait, you, need, get, you get to stick around for six hours. We keep just bringing in 25 at a time and nobody's leaving. There's no room to dance. You can't get a drink at the bar. This is crazy. These coaches need a raise in the limit of and the number of scholarships. And you can't raise the number. Let me make this very clear. You can't raise the number. Title nine. That title, anything title, that's a law. And that law dictates and states and prescribes. Prescribes means it's written. You must abide by it because it's written. It prescribes that there must be an equal number of men and women sports. Men and women scholarship athletes at every university. They must be equivalent. So you can't increase the number from 85 because you have an equal number of female scholarship athletes somewhere on, on campus, whether that be cheerleaders, track athletes, softball, water polo, gymnastics. I don't know. You do whatever it takes to make the number equal because we need equality in this world. I've been watching a video all day of a, of a fat ass dude who's obese beating up two chicks, bro. That's the most equality I've ever seen. They should have probably put four in there to make it even. I'm just saying. This is nuts. And I, I feel terrible for college coaches who have to try to make it work. You got to try to make it work. These kids are going to be rolling around. These journeymen, eight-year college guys, seven-year college guys, uh, it's, it's gross. And if you have a, an injury and you get a medical red shirt, that doesn't count either. I didn't even talk about it. You can get that as well. Bananas. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows.